Okay, good morning. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, teacher. Okay. Today our lesson is talking about rational expression. Okay. Now and we learn, inshallah, today we will learn about how can we simplify the rational expression and how can we multiply and divide them. Now, before we start, what is the rational expression? The rational expression, it is a coefficient of polynomial over polynomial. This is now the meaning of the rational of the rational expression. But these polynomials are not like the rational functions, any function over any function. No, these two polynomials it must have or it must be in the simplest form, like x minus one over x plus two as an example. I cannot simplify between them. I cannot. Uh, uh, simplify them, yes. So that's this type of expression. I can call them an irrational expression because it is a simplest form. Now, how can we find the uh, rational expression? Oh, uh, sorry. How can we simplify now the rational expression? So the rational expression, it is a quotient of two polynomial numbers or two of two polynomials function. And this rational expression, I can, I have to write them in the simplest form. How? The first step, I have to factorize both the polynomial or the numerator and the denominator. After I factorize them, I have now to, to find the common divisor between them. Then I will divide them into the common divisor. So factorize, find the common factor, then divide now on the common divisor. Look at this one here, x squared plus three x plus two over x plus three. And this one here now, the first step, let's factorize the numerator will be x plus uh, so plus one is two. Plus two. So it is x plus two times x plus one over x plus three. So the first step, I factorize them. The second step. Is there a common factor or common divisor between them? No. no. Here we have x plus two, here up we have x plus one, and down we have x plus three. So there's no common divisor. So because there is no common divisor, I will say that this one is in the simplest form. I can say that it is in the simplest form. Now, the second one here. In the second one, three x minus three over x minus three. Is there a common factor between them? Yes. It's x yes. minus 3. So I will now divide the numerator into x minus 3. And I will divide also the denominator into x minus 3. And the answer now will be 3. So this one now is not in the simplest form. It is a rational expression, but it's not in the simplest form. But look at this one here. This x over x squared also. It is in the simplest form. No, because I can't. Simplify them, it will be 1 over x. Now, you can simplify a rational expression, as I told you, by dividing out the common factor uh, in the, uh, or the common factors in the numerator and the denominator. Let's see this one here. It's x squared minus x minus x. So I can rewrite it as x 
minus 3 times x plus 2. Then, so the first step now, I have to factorize the numerator and the denominator. Then, let's now factorize the denominator. It will be x plus 2 times x minus 1. Then the second step, find the common factor. Is there a common factor here? Yes, yes. x plus 2. It is x plus 2. So after the, the first step now, divide the numerator and the common divisor or the common factor to the same, and also the denominator in the common divisor. Let's divide them, or you can name, you can now simplify it. So the answer now it will be x plus 3 over x minus. These are now the rational function, uh, expression, but in the simplest form. Did now, you, what do you say the last name? But in the simplest form? Yes, this is the simplest form. So, teacher, why the last equation that you did it, it's not in the simplest form? Can you repeat, please? When the solution becomes 3, why you say it's not in the simplest form? It is the same like this. Yes, it is in the simplest form. Yeah, this one, why it is not in the simplest form? This one, why it's not? It is not, or it is? No, this one, is it in the simplest form? But after oh. I simplify it, it is a simple one. Now, here, before we start with the problem number one, I want you now to discuss some, uh, you can say some problems or some things that I found uh, them when the grade uh, 12 or uh, in, the pre in the previous year, that they have, uh, yeah, that they have, they, uh, face them or meet them, and it's, and it's really a big mistake. Let's start with the first one. Before we're starting, problem number one. Teacher? Yes? Uh, teacher, but I don't have to go Okay. Who is the Jane? Hanin, are you here? Uh, yeah, I'm here. That's Habiba. Hey, Habiba. The name of Ritten is Hanin. Yeah, it's her sister's name. She cannot change it. Oh, okay. okay. Who is the Jane? I think it's the Jane. Me. Okay, that's okay. Okay, not so Now, if you have x, sorry, x squared minus nine, how can I factorize them? Yes, Rose. X, How can you factorize x squared minus 9? It will be x plus 3 times x minus 1. x plus 3 times x minus 1. That was minus 3. x minus 3. Thank you. So, if you have x squared minus 9, I can factorize it to be as x plus 3 and x minus 3. What about x squared plus 9? Yes, Yara. 
Ja då. Mm. X plus 3 and X plus 3. Are you sure? Are you sure, Yara? Minus 3? No. This one, it cannot be factorized. It's only for a squared minus b squared. I can factorize them to be as a minus b times a plus b. But a squared plus b squared cannot be. Yeah. I admit her, but does she have a problem? Yes, Habiba, are you here now? Okay. You know. So, these girls need the microphone. So, if you have x squared minus 9, I can factorize them into x minus 3 plus x plus 3. But, if you have x squared plus 9, I cannot factorize them. Okay, this is the first mistake that I found it with the upper grid. The first, the second thing here, what about x minus 9 squared? How can I factorize them? Yes, Rahat. It's only x minus one because the square of the two to the power two is outside the parenthesis. So how can I how can I factorize them? It's x minus nine times x minus nine. Thank you. This one now it's me that x minus nine repeat it. So I write rewrite it as x minus nine times x minus nine. But if you have x squared minus 81, I can now rewrite it as x minus 9 times x plus 9. Now, another thing. Um, uh, if you want to yes. In x minus 9 squared, can we just follow the binomial theorem instead of doing the FOIL? Yes, yes. I'll just see how to factorize them. That's I want to talk about it now. If you have now x minus 9 times x minus 9, how can you multiply them? By the FOIL method. Or we can make it x minus 9 plus um, 2 a minus 2ab plus b squared. Thank you. If I want now to multiply a minus b times a plus b, I will say that the first one squared. Now, at uh, the, no, sorry, what did I do here? It is minus. Now look at the sign here. It is what? It's minus. So I will put it as a plus. Then, uh, wait, no, sorry. Now, it's a squared, the first common, of the first variable squared. Then, what is the sign here? It's minus, keep it as minus. A, 2, A, B. Then, what is the sign here? It is minus, so I will put now the opposite of it, which is plus. So, if you want to multiply A minus B times A minus B, the answer is A squared minus 2, A, B, plus b squared. But if you want to multiply now a plus b times a plus b, look here, look at the first one, okay? a squared 
what's this oh, the sign here? It's a plus, plus two AB plus B squared. These are now, if I want to multiply them. So I want to multiply now A minus B times A plus B. Here, if you have the same sign, it will be A squared minus two AB plus B squared or a squared plus 2AB plus B squared. They have must be B plus B squared. They have to be A squared also. But here, if they are minus, this one be minus. And if they are, so the two variables, they are added, here it will be plus. But if you have different sign, it will be as A squared minus B squared, by like completing this one. Now, another thing. If you have three, um, uh, sure, it will be a squared minus b squared. Yes. Okay. If you have now x plus three over x minus a three, can I simplify them? Habiba. Habiba. Yes, teacher. Can I simplify them? No. Okay, so Habiba, say no. Rahad. Can you simplify them? No. No, also. Lama, can you simplify them? No. Lama? No. no one say yes. Lana. Lana. Yes. Lana says yes. Sausan. No. Who else? Hanien. I think it's no, but we can divide it. Hanian, I will tell um, you. Ah, no, okay. <coughs> the answer is no. Why? <coughs> Actually, the big, big mistake I found them, they make like this. It cannot. I can't, it cannot simplify it. Because x is not alone, so it's subtracted by 3 and added by 3. Here, the variable x, when variable x or any variable is added, it cannot be simplified. Actually, I did like, they, I found them like, they're like this. And they told me the answer is negative 1. It is false. So, if you have x plus 3 over x minus 3, it cannot be simplified. But but if you have now x minus 3 over x uh, sorry. over three minus X for this one now here, okay? If you look at this one, it's different than X minus three and X plus three. This one, oh, sorry. I didn't know why they even didn't erase everything there, it's written. So X minus a three over three minus X, it's not like three plus X over three minus X. For this one, as I said before, it cannot be simplified. But an X minus three over three minus X. Look here, what, is, what about now the sign of X? It's a plus. 
and the sign of x here, it is negative or minus. Here, the, it is negative 3 and 3. So, that's mean what? If we have both of them have an opposite, yeah, I mean x, the opposite of x is negative x. And negative 3, the opposite of it is positive 3, so it can be simplified. Here, we have 3 and 3, they are positive. One of them have the same sign, it cannot be. Here now, for the first one, x minus 3 over 3 minus x. If you take negative 1 from the denominator as a common factor, what to the answer will be? I will divide the 3 onto negative 1, it will be negative 3. It's and negative x, x. It will be negative 1, so it will be plus, plus x. Now rewrite them. It will be negative 1 and not, instead of writing negative 3 plus x, I just exchange the order to be as To be as x minus 3, just changing the order. Then after that, I can simplify them, and the answer now is negative 1. So I will repeat. If you have x plus 4 over x minus 4, x has the same uh, sign, and here they have different sign. I cannot simplify it. But if you have x plus 4 over 4 minus x, it can be simplified, and the answer is negative 1. Uh, just that, yes. Now back to our lesson. Yes. If we have x plus 4 over 4 minus x, um, the denominator will make it negative 1 times negative 4 plus x. Yes, it has the same idea, the same steps. But teacher, the 4 will be negative. Okay, you can write it as so, x minus 4. So it will be like negative 1? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, now simplify it. Now let's go back to our lesson. How can now we simplify a rational expression? Look at the steps here. The problem, sorry. X squared it is X squared plus 7X plus 10 over X squared minus 3X minus 10. I want now to write it to rewrite this side, this, uh, this uh, rational expression into the simplest form. Look here. The first step, I want now to factorize them. It will be x plus 5 times x plus 2 over x minus 5 over x plus 2. The first step, I factorize them. The second step, I will search about if they have, we have, if did we have, if, uh, we have, sorry, a common divisor or common factor. So find common x divisor, which are x plus two. The third step now, you have to simplify. Let's do now. Simplify them. So after simplifying, the answer is x plus 5 over x minus 5. Is it in the simplest form? Yes. Yes, thank you. So it is now in the simplest. So I found now it is in the simplest form. I'm sorry. Can you <coughs> make it like negative 1 
times x plus 5. Yes? No. Yeah. No. I no. told you to, if you have this the opposite of x, the, uh, or the variable x in the numerator, if it is, has an opposite sign of what have you in the, number, in the numerator. Now, the second step, I want now to state any restrictions in the variable. Like, did you remember when I told you how to find the points of discontinuity? Like, okay, if you want to write in the simplest form, but you have to say that the points of discontinuity, you have to find them before you remove the, so the, remove the functions. Here we have the same. X cannot, I five. cannot be five and cannot be negative two. The restrictions, yes, the restrictions. If I want to find them, I have to go back to the factorized function. And I have to step and this is and this. Uh, I have to stop. Sorry, on this step here. This is a function. When I stop at them, I just look that what are the zeros of the denominator. It is x equal negative two, and x equal five. They are the zeros of the denominator. Now, I must write the restriction to prevent my function to be a zero. So I will say that this is the, sim the, the simplest one, but when x is not equal to negative two, and with, with the x is not equal to negative half, why? Because at point negative two, and at point five, it's make my function to be as undefined or something over zero. To prevent this, I will tell my, uh, I, I mean, tell my, anyone I mean, that if I, okay, I have this, simple, this expression and I write it now in the simplest form, but be careful, take care that this is my simplest form, but not at, x equal negative 2 and x equal 5. Miss? Teacher, yes. can you read the last yes. one? Here. What should I repeat? Uh, the last one. That x and equal negative 2. Here. Do you know from where I get negative 2 and from where I get 5? Could you know from where I get uh, negative two yeah. and five? Yeah, yeah, I know, but like I mean, what do you mean about x and equal negative two and x and equal five? These are, I mean that these are oh these two points now. Okay, that's if I substitute it in my function. The function will be undefined. So, if so, I will tell them that, or I will tell my students that this is the simplify the simplified uh, or the simplest form of the function. But be careful that this is the simplified, but it will not be defined at point negative two and five. So, if I ask you about the restrictions, you tell me about negative two and five. Let's do now, got it, one. Look at A. In A here, you find you have, say, 24 x cubed y squared <coughs> over negative 6 x squared y cubed. Let's now try to find the common factor here. Do you have, can you simplify x squared with x? Yes. It will be? x to the power one, which is x. And y cubed with y squared? Yes, it's y to the power negative one. Y to the y down. And here, it will be one, oh, and here is four. Just divided by six, dividing by six. And is it clear or I should do uh, should tell you more details or most of the, uh, more uh, details about these steps. No, no, it is clear. Okay, so here we have four and we have negative one. So I will write as negative four x 
over one. This is now the simplest form of the rational expression. Now, what are the restrictions? I have to y cannot one. equal zero and x cannot equal zero. Thank you. When x cannot be zero and y cannot be zero. Let's do now C. Teacher, we will see the restrictions before we simplify x. Yes. Now, let's see. Oh, let's do C. And see here, we have 12 minus 4x over x squared minus 9. Here, the first step, I have to try to find or I have to factorize them. Can we take 4 as a compaction? Yeah. So it will be 12. 3 minus 4. 3 minus 6. Over. X squared minus 9. It's like completing the square. Three, X. So and X minus a 3. <coughs> now, after that, 3 minus X. Can I simplify it with X minus 3 or with X plus 3? We can simplify it with X minus 3. Let's have negative one from up as a common factor now. Take another common factor. How it will be now? Will x be minus a three. Three plus x. Is it right? Yes. I divide a three into negative one, which it will be negative a three, and negative x into negative one, which will be positive x or plus x over x minus 3 over x plus 3. Now, this one, I can rewrite it as x minus 3 also. Just changing the order. Just, yes. So I can now simplify it by these steps. Then the answer is negative 4 over x plus 3. This is now the simplest form. I want now to find the restrictions. How can I find the restrictions? Just go back to the oldest one. What are the restrictions here? X and equal three, X and X three. can't equal negative three and three. So, I will say that when X is not equal three and when X is not equal to negative three. <coughs> now here x squared minus x squared over x minus, uh, sorry, x times x minus 1 raised to the power negative 2 times x squared plus 3x minus 4. Here now, the first step, let's take x as a common factor. So what did you have now? x minus 1 squared over Rewrite it now. It is x. Now, as we know in grade 8, if you have x minus 1, or uh, sorry, x to the power negative 3, how can I rewrite it? The first step. What is the reciprocal of x? There's 1 over x. What is the opposite of negative 3? It is positive 3. So, reciprocal, then opposite. x to the power negative or raised to the power negative 3, I can rewrite it as 1 over x cubed. So here is the same. If you have x minus 1 raised to the power negative 2, I can rewrite it as 1 over x minus 1 squared times x squared plus 3x plus 4. So now, Here. Sir, it's a, can you repeat uh, how do you make the x times x minus 1 to the power negative 2? You just flip it, yeah? Yes. But, but you make here. the x 
But you said the X will be in the numerator? Yes, because it's right, it's a subsequent and change the negative 2 to be as positive 2. Right, it's opposite. Then, here, and you know that also, if you have A times B squared, you have it's a product of variable, and it is raised to the exponents. So it can be written as A squared, B squared. So here's the same. I can write it as X squared times X minus one squared over X over X minus one squared times. Here, how can you simplify now this polynomial function? Yes, it will be X minus, uh, X plus four times minus one. Yes. Then, after that, if you have A over B over C, I mean, if you divide the three into fraction, it is like multiplying A with C over B. Yeah. So, this, actually, this C, it will going to be up. So, it will be AC over B. And here, it will be 3 times 2 over 1. Just, I mean, if you want to divide 3 into half, what did we do? We keep 3, then I will divide, may change the divide to be as multiply, then multiplying with the reciprocal. So, here, I told you, I told you about these things to help me to solve this one. Because I can now put x minus one squared, I can move it to be up. So it can be like x squared times x minus one. And this is squared, when I get it up, X minus one squared, multiply with X minus one squared, the, X, the powers will be added. So it will be four over X times X plus four times X minus one. Until now, is there anything not clear? Teacher, I actually get confused from this point. Which one, tell me. Um, how did you bring the four? And uh, power four. Here, I told you that if you multiply. If you multiply A into B into C, it will be AC over B. And if you have x minus one squared, this one I mean, divided by the green one, which is x over x minus one squared, it is the same as <clears throat> a, b, c. If you write it now, it will be a times c over b. I mean, x minus one squared times x minus one squared over x. Oh, yeah. Again. Okay, thank you, teacher. Then you will add the exponents as we have the same base. So it would be x minus one to the power or raised to the power four. Now, After that, let's try now to simplify them. X with X to be X. X minus K will be X minus one raised to the power three. So it will be X times X minus one cubed over X plus four. This is now the simplest form. Now what about the instructions? I have to go back. <clears throat> Go back here. So what are the instructions now? Before, 
x cannot be 0 or 1 or negative 4. Thank you. Look at the functions before simplified. It cannot be 0, it cannot be negative 4, and it cannot be 1. It's 45, yes. Okay, so I will stop here today. Tomorrow, we will talk about how can we multiply and I divide, uh, dividing the rational, the rational uh, expressions. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? Thank you, teacher. Thank, Thank you, you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.